Hello, I'm Eric Petaplace and I'm a systems librarian at California College of the Arts. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about a command line interface to open Aquella, which I've created. First, a little context. Um, California College of the Arts is a small art and design school in the California Bay Area. We are located on the unceded territories of the Chechenyo and Ramatush Ohlone peoples. We're longtime Aquella users, um, and our instance contains over 75,000 items representing everything from student artworks to syllabi to archival document. Um, the tool that I'm going to talk about is called Aquella CLI, or EQ for short, um, and it's a set of command line shortcuts to the Open Aquella REST APIs. I wrote it in Node.js, so it's written in, in JavaScript, um, and it basically just wraps um, HTTP requests to the REST APIs. You can install it using Node's package manager, npm, so you would npm install, and then you want it uh, global, so it's accessible on your path of your command line, and then you configure a Aquella RC file, um, which you can put in your user's home directory or in particular project directories. And at a minimum, what that contains is the root URL of your Open Aquella instance and an OAuth token, which you can create in the Open Aquella settings. Um, and you can give it whatever limited permissions you want. So you don't have to have a token that does absolutely everything. It could just have like read access, for instance, if you configured it appropriately. Um, and you can add lots of other details to this configuration file. Um, basically any option that's later used by EQ can be configured in this file, but this is the sort of baseline to, to get a working um, EQ tool. So before I go much deeper into the tool, just a simple example here. Um, this prints the, the title in the URL of the first item contributed by an internal user who has a username Audrey Lord. Um, we can see this executed. If I switch over to my terminal, I'll just go ahead and run it to um, demonstrate to you that it works. Uh, I have it configured so that a debugging statement is printed. So you see the REST API URLs that are being hit um, printed to the console as well. So you have a, a sense of how it's working underneath the scene. And then it prints out um, the title of this item as well as the URL to it, which I could literally just click in my terminal to pull it up. Um, what's interesting about this example, which is quite simplistic, is that it also shows how you can plug one result from EQ into another. So we're actually doing um, two queries here, you can see. We're looking up the user by their username in order to get their UUID, their identifier, and then we're also using the search API. So we're actually using the search and the user API, and then we are piping it through JQ, um, a command line JSON processor, which I will talk more about. Um, a little bit later on. So why did I create EQ? Um, I knew that Open Aquella had comprehensive APIs and I needed an excuse to dive deep into them. I wanted to learn more about Node.js and writing a command line tool as well, since those were skills that I was certain that I wanted to learn and was excited about. And finally, I just really love spending time reading green font on a black background. Uh, I love to interact with our digital archive from the terminal. Um, this isn't a trite observation either about the command line. Um, while I'm certain there are good systems people who use the command line rarely or not at all, to me it's the most efficient way to accomplish most tasks because of the way it facilitates automation because any suite of actions can be composed into a larger script, which can be written to adapt to different contexts and time periods. You can work so much more efficiently if you can frame 
tasks into commands, into executable scripts on the command line. Elaborating on that last point, one of the beautiful things about the command line is that you can stitch together complicated routines from a series of relatively simple pieces of software. Um, EQ is a good example of a relatively simple piece of software as it's all it fundamentally does is just abstract over the open Aquila REST APIs. It's, it's quite simple um, and it pretty prints the JSON that you receive back. It's nothing more than a sort of syntactic sugar on top of some of the API routes. Um, if we think back to the example that I showed, it's because EQ is turning uh, Open Aquila API calls into just raw text that can be passed around that it integrates with other CLI tools. So in the example, it integrates with itself, right? We use the user data to pass it to EQ, but then it's also piped through um, JQ to get a nice clickable URL and, and readable title that's easy for a human being to understand. Um, this sort of composability is the power of the command line and more broadly the Unix philosophy of computing. Um, the command line is littered with wonderful tools that adhere to another component of the Unix philosophy, do one thing and do it well. That's the goal of EQ is to be a proxy for the Open Aquila APIs and make that text output pluggable into other programs. The Open Aquila APIs are really strong. There's an API route for almost anything, and you can perform a great number of tasks easily through the APIs. It's notable that there are already a few major tools that use the Open Aquila APIs. Um, I think these actually use the SOAP and not REST APIs, um, but here at CCA, we make extensive use of the, the Python SOAP API toolkit to create taxonomies. Um, you can feed CSVs into the tool and it creates taxonomies, which is really easy, right? Because a lot of data comes in a CSV-like format or can be mapped to CSV easily. Um, and then also another good example is EBI, the Aquila Bulk Importer app. Uh, and that is another thing that makes use of like CSV-like data where you can basically take spreadsheet data and create many items. So it's a great bulk import tool that also uses the, the APIs. Um, but what I really love about the API is actually the, the built-in documentation that every Aquela instance has. Um, it's not only pretty comprehensive, uh, but it lets you test API calls. So you can actually fill in example values. You can see what options exist for a route and you can test right there in your browser. EQ almost always prints raw JSON output to the terminal, um, which can be useful for saving to JSON files, but it's not really great to be piped to other commands. Um, most Unix utilities want simple text, kind of unstructured text or URLs um, to work with. And that's why uh, JQ is so essential and I end up using it so much in concert with EQ. It acts as a translator taking this Open Aquella JSON and turning it into more specific usable pieces of text. So here are two simple examples. Um, in the first one, I find the JSON output of a particular item and JQ helps to syntax highlight the detailed output. And in the second, I use JQ as a bridge from Open Aquella search results to open all those results in my web browser using the open command. So that'll actually open 10 tabs, one after another really quickly um, that I can then look at the, the individual items. And JQ has filters that allow you to drill down into a JSON object and look at particular properties within it. So for instance, if I wanted just the name of this particular item, the, the title of the item, I can get it using a filter that lo looks like this. For the use case of merely inspecting JSON data, um, FX 
is perhaps an even better tool. Um, FX is another NPM package, which not only syntax highlights the JSON you pipe to it, but also collapses large objects to make the data easier to browse and easier to read. You can interactively uh, navigate your way through a large and nested data set, opening up object details by clicking a little ellipsis. Um, this is great for exploring some of the more detailed API output like the items route, for instance, which I just showed. I haven't used uh, FX as much as JQ, but it also has filtering functionality such that you can return just particular pieces of text rather than um, look at an interactive uh, object. Um, so here you see an example, and I will show a live example as well. So this looks the same as our last example, where we're simply um, taking that item uh, data and piping it to FX, um, but you can see that everything is collapsed within this dot, 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 and we can expand it, and it's so much easier to browse through and look at different pieces of it. And for instance, if there are lots of attachments, we can investigate particular attachments um, without being kind of overwhelmed by the length and quantity of data contained in the API result. And so FX is really great for browsing through data and it does a good job of syntax highlighting things according to the data type as well. You'll see here that the Boolean values and the integer value for size, for instance, are syntax highlighted. One example of an active um, project uh, piece of infrastructure that we have at CCA that utilizes JQ is a really large course lists project we have which converts course information at our institution into a series of departmental taxonomies in OpenAquella, turning them into essentially vocabulary lists and a hierarchical course structure that our users can browse when contributing items. So it's basically a nicety for the contribution forms where people go through and they're able to browse to a particular course within a particular semester, or for instance, select their faculty advisors from a list of faculty that we know have taught within a particular department. Um, so we create many, many taxonomies based off of course data. JQ's role in this um, course list project is actually rather minor, but it's still quite helpful to have. Um, what it does is it looks up the UUIDs of taxonomies using a naming convention that we have. So they all follow a specific name and use a special department code that uniquely identifies a department. And we can use uh, EQ which is utilized in a call to a subshell. So it's the code that is in parentheses here in this example. Um, we use the taxonomy API route to look up a taxonomy by name and retrieve its uh, UUID. And a common feature that I've built into um, the EQ tool is the ability to look objects up by their name, which is not uh, necessarily a feature of all the API routes, but I've built it such that you can pass a name and receive back the object because it tries to retrieve all taxonomies, filters through them and finds the one with a matching name and then returns that one is how the, the name flag works behind the scenes. Here's just one more example of a thing that EQ can do. Um, we have very complex contribution forms which make it hard to fully troubleshoot every possible path that our users might take through them. Um, and our item titles are also not always comprised of the same elements. They might contain a work type, course title, creator name, or a creator provided title depending on a number of different factors. So sometimes someone will make it through a contribution form and yet the title will be undefined in the end just because of a flaw in, in a, how we've structured these complex forms. Um, and then that looks really awkward in OpenAquella because OpenAquella sets the item's title to be its UUID, which is this 
very long, complex looking string that confuses our users. Open Aquella's Manage Resources tool, um, that page in the web app, is really great at finding items that match particular metadata patterns and then modifying them. But it does have a blind spot in that you can test for the existence of a metadata node, but you can't test for its nullity. There's no way to find items without titles using managed resources that I've found at least. Um, with the REST API, however, we can simply look up all of our items and use whatever filtering we want if we're interested in a particular collection. And we can look for items whose JSON data lacks the name property. Um, so this first line of code here uh, shows how to look through the first 50, um, the last 50 items contributed um, using the search API route. It pipes that to JQ to print out the URL and the title of each result. And then I actually use another tool, ACK, which is a like a reg regular expression search tool um, similar to grep. Um, I, I look for the ones that say null, meaning that they don't have a name field. And because the, the um, URL will be printed right beneath them, this makes it really easy for me to grab those items and look at the contribution forms and fix whatever the problem is. Now you can only get 50 search results at a time. Um, so beneath, I've written a sort of proof of concept of simply iterating over um, paging through search results um, 50 at a time for a large quantity of results. Um, so you could actually go through a thousand items using this slightly more complicated loop. So this is a, just an interesting example of how I can actually add functionality that Manage Resources, which is a wonderful tool, doesn't have um, utilizing JQ and a few of these other utilities like ACK um, patching those together to determine um, what items don't have titles. And we can look at my terminal once more to see just one last example of what this looks like. Um, so you can see that it looked just through those last 50 and it found one item, this item here that had a null title field and it gives me the URL right there so that I go, can go look at the item and diagnose what's going on. I've also written in several handy shortcuts that don't have to do with the REST APIs into the EQ tool. So you can run EQ launch to open the new admin console. It'll actually copy your password to your clipboard as well if your password is in your Aquella RC file. Um, similarly, EQ Login opens up the login page and fills in credentials in your web browser. Um, you can open up various uh, settings pages, so you can just go to a particular part of the settings, and you can also open up the API documentation with EQ API Docs. Uh, there are a few limitations and things that aren't quite finished about EQ. Um, it is a tool that I'm sort of writing on the side in my spare time. We use it in production, essentially, like it's in integral to a lot of my workflows, but I wouldn't say that it's a truly battle-tested utility. Um, for instance, there are not very many tests written for it but I am starting to write more. Um, it's challenging to write tests for a tool like this because I have to mock out actual data in a Open Aquella instance and create things like test items and test collections. So that's just been uh, a little bit challenging and not a priority of mine. The Open Aquella APIs let you lock resources to make sure that nobody else is editing them when you're editing them, but this functionality isn't built into the tool. Um, but the tool will make any arbitrary uh, API request um, to any, any URL. So you could uh, do this yourself if you wanted to. You could do HTTP requests to lock something and then modify it and then unlock it um, if you were familiar enough with the APIs. Uh, it can't like, simply download an item complete with all of, the, all of its files. Um, which is just something that, you know, would be really useful if it existed, but there's no like API route for that. You would have to stitch together a few different things to do it. 
Um, and then there are the rare blind spots in the APIs. There's like certain little things you can't do or, the, or that don't work um, as well as they could. But to be honest, there's many more blind spots in EQ because the APIs are huge and touch on a whole lot of Open Aquella functionality, including functionality that we at CCA don't use. So I've spent my time focusing on what I think of as the major important API routes that do come up in my work, like search, items, users, groups, taxonomies, and I have not um, made sure that every single API route has options available to it. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for having me at Open Aperio. I'm really happy to talk about this tool. Um, I'm excited for any feedback that people have. Here are a few links um, for the presentation, and I can be reached at FET23 on most platforms um, if you want to follow up with me. Thank you. Chris uh, wrote into the chat, have you considered setting up a Dockerized instance of Open Aquella and then build out the institution via OEQ CLI? Um, and yeah, that would be a, a great idea because right now I just have like one test collection and basically the tests um, have that UUID built into them somewhere. And so somebody else could easily run the tests against their own institution. They would just have to build like an empty collection and fill that in there. But um, it's not totally decoupled from our institution, right? Um, but yeah, that, that would be a, a really good solution. And then I've, um, I've just been playing with, uh, you know, doing actual REST API calls during testing is like already a little bit of uh, complexity overhead, um, uh, a little bit sophisticated, but I have managed to do successful ones for some, some basic things. So just don't have a lot of time to build everything as, as robust as it could be. Right, I can see that. The, um, it's a really neat tool and I like how you've uh, developed it so you can just install it via NPM, right? There's nothing difficult about that. Um, the, I mean, the, the community, mostly Edelax, have built out quite a few of the automated tests, um, which is nice, right? So when you're running Open Aquella Core, um, but the thing that I, I've always thought would be kind of super useful is to be able to start with a bare institution, and in this case, I could see that being really helpful. You start with a bare institution, and then you totally. can use Open Aquila Saint or the CLI tool to build out the institution, to test it, to tear it down all through the Docker image, um, and now you have repeatable testing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I guess I didn't consider this, but yeah, with a fresh image, right, you would have to somehow bootstrap yourself to get the REST API token. Um, so that would either have to be like pre-prepared or something like I, I haven't really thought through that aspect of it either, right? Because the reason why the tests work locally for me is they're using the same token that I'm using just to do things, just to use the thing, you know, normally. So that would be an added uh, bit of complexity. I don't know if Open Aquella has a way to automatically generate like a REST API, but, or a REST token. Yeah, I don't, I don't, from memory, there's not a way to set that up. However, um, I wonder if it would be pretty easy to just drop something in the database, right? Like if your CLI tool has access to the Docker image anyways, right? And this would obviously just be for testing and you, you kind of hack in a way to just drop a few values in the database and now you have full access to it. Kind of scary, kind of cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. But then you could, you could do it all through the CLI. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I guess once you had that, you, you know, you could do anything because you could just have fixtures, um, JSON files for creating like, you know, fake taxonomy, fake collection, whatever, but just needs that little bit of bootstrapping to get going. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that would be pretty sweet. Yeah, that's cool. I, I'll definitely um, check out the, the Docker file and play with that a little bit. I love how just like, 
open a call is one of those things that's so large and has the <clears throat> dependencies on other um, projects, right? Like other Apache projects and stuff that it's pretty intimidating for me to install locally on my laptop. But if I can just do Docker build and then I've got it, that's super appealing, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can see that, I can see that. This also gives just a great story to using Open Aquila as a headless CMS. I, yeah, uh, totally. I, I think, I think you, we still need to have the ability to upload a file, um, like an image, right, um, or a PDF or whatnot. Um, but all the plumbing that you've done and all the efforts you've done, I mean, just seeing the examples and the, the value out of being able to just stitch it together, like you're saying, is, is pretty cool. Yeah, totally. And I just haven't explored that part of the API as much, but um, you know, maybe there would be some way to do that. Certainly the, the tool would have to be modified to process a file parameter being passed, but you can definitely create items, you know, just posting to the items route and stuff like that. And then I think there's like a file route or something. And there's a few other things you have to do to get the attachment onto the item and, th and things like that. Yeah, but, yeah. There's there's flows already out there. Um, I think there's a J meter test um, that's out there that that does that walks through all the the API steps. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what is what is Aquila CLI licensed as? I mean, it's open source, right? Um, yes, and I think it's under CCA, and so we always use um, ECL 2.0, the educational license, which is based off of Apache. Um, let me double check that I have that in here. Yeah, it's uh, ECL version 2.0. Not a license I was familiar with before, but it is an open source one. I can paste okay. um, the link to it in there. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, and you know, um, I'm obviously happy for people to use it or repackage it, whatever. I don't, I don't care. You know, I'm not trying to profit off of this. So. Yeah, I think it might. I mean, the the user group is unfortunately really quiet, but I know that the um, um, you know, I watch it, and the um, uh, the Edelex team watches it. Um, and if they're not aware of this tool, I think this would be a pretty cool tool for them to to be aware of, and um, it'd be neat to get other people, you know, putting pull requests against this. Totally. Yeah, I I would love that for sure. Well, we are at time. Thank you, Eric, very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Chris, for jumping in on the conversation. And uh, we will see you all around. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you. Good to see you, Chris. Yep.